So in this little video I show quickly how to use and connect to the V100 starting Jupyter Notebook. So I tried to connect using the dash V argument here to SSH because I wanted to see which SSH key is using. Sometimes you may get asked for a password when you try to connect to um, the computer science cluster head node, but if you get this then it means typically that there's a problem with the SSH key. Therefore with dash V we can debug this problem and I see that here it tries several SSH keys which is exactly what I wanted and in fact it works I connect it. So um, when you run Jupyter Notebook normally Jupyter Notebook gives you a password in terms of a token. Yeah, and um, to prevent it it gives you a password. One way is to initialize it once and I do this here. I just run Jupyter Notebook dash dash generate config. I overwrite my existing config because I tested it. Next I input a password. For example test in my case. I verify it. Now when you connect the first... Now we, we assume this is a one-time setup. You do it once. Now let's talk about a typical session. I connect to the V100 and I want to run Jupyter. Right? So what you need to do is you, you say Jupyter Notebook IP address, like so. Let me do that. So this in fact already opened the browser, but this is a, just a terminal browser and it shows me the IP address is 8890. Now what you need to do is you need to connect again uh, and then add forward the IP address the uh, port to the local machine. So therefore we use ssh-l. Now we specify the port on the local machine, for example port 9000. On this port I want to forward the machine localhost, port 8890, which is indicated by Jupyter here, 8890, from the V100. Okay, so that's it. Now the what does localhost mean? Localhost is, is the name of the machine that I forward after connected to the V100. So that naturally means it's basically the V100. So I could have specified here V100 as well. The difference is that the IP address is slightly different, so it's more efficient to use localhost here. So let me do that. Okay, so that should be it. Now I'm connected again. Yeah, so you are connected two times. Not a big problem. Let me now connect here to localhost on port 9000. Here we go, Jupyter opens, I input a password test and I'm here. Connected and I can do things. Once you are done, um, please stop the Jupyter server by clicking on quit. And that means if you go back to the other terminal, you see that it shut down itself and so I can close it. Right, so that's pretty self-explanatory. Sometimes what you want to do is you want to run Jupyter while you are disconnected. If you ever want to do that, just prefix with the command screen, Jupyter Notebook. So that will allow you to start on the server a service that starts Jupyter Notebook and the service will run all by you are disconnected, allowing to run kernels that go on for several days in terms of analysis. Let me run it. Now it's run. Now you can press Control A and D to detach and we, we, now I can disconnect here um, from the V100. I still would need a second terminal. Again in this terminal I need to connect to the port and we see this is in this case exactly the same port 8890. So I would need to connect again saying 8890 as port on the machine. I keep here always my port 9000 because that allows me not to change my browser port. So makes it a little bit simpler in my case. Let me run again a, a little demo. So I put here um, a localhost port 9000 and again I'm here in Jupyter Notebook. Right and uh, again I can now run certain services. And once I'm done with my job, I would put here quit. And that's pretty much terminating it. 
enjoy have have fun and if you have any issue let me know